Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 28, verses 17 through 31, which go to the end of the book. The scene is that Paul has been arrested. Paul has been sent to Rome because there are people objecting to his preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when he gets there, this is what he says. And this is what happens. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had any charge to bring against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of the brothers who have been there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are, for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place he was staying. From morning till evening, he explained and declared to him the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul made his final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your forefathers when he said that through Isaiah the prophet, go to this people and say, you will ever, you will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will ever be seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart have become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. May God add his blessing and understanding to the reading of his holy word. The Apostle Paul's ministry had been a long and arduous trip setting out from Jerusalem to Damascus, across Turkey and Greece, back to Jerusalem, out to Cyprus, Syria, back to Jerusalem and Caesarea. About 20 years or so, he had been preaching, traveling, and meeting up with formidable resistance. He had been imprisoned, beaten, and tossed out of town too many times to count. His final journey to Rome had had its challenges too. Stormy weather had blown the ship off course. They had been shipwrecked on the Isle of Malta, and now finally he is in Rome, the center of the Roman Empire. Paul arrives a prisoner of the empire after appealing to Caesar for justice. As a Roman citizen, if he felt that he was not receiving justice in the providential court out in Judea, he had a right to appeal to the empress, and he did. As a result, Paul had been shipped off to Rome. I always like to think that maybe there was another meaning in this, that maybe Paul was doing this to get himself to Rome so he could further preach the gospel. Interesting. Once Paul arrived in Rome, he was allowed to live by himself, which means he probably rented a house, but he still had guards at his door, and every four hours or so, the guards change. It was not an ideal situ situation for Paul to teach the gospel. But it was adequate and allowed Paul to further his mission for another two years. The book of Acts comes to a very abrupt end. 
From a very deep discussion with Jewish leaders, the book ends with the words on, in, chat, in verse 31. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. As I worked on my sermon this week, those last words stuck in my mind. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached. It's a good word to describe Paul and his mission. Bold. Bold as in courageous, dauntless, fearless, unafraid, undaunted, valiant, valorous. All those words. Bold. For the disciples, even for the disciples, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ had been about boldness. The apostles Peter and John had been hauled before the Sanhedrin who commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus Christ. After they were released by the Sanhedrin, Acts 4 tells us the rest of the story. After they, all the followers of Christ, prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. They were filled with the whole, being told no was not going to silence them. They remained defiant, brash, and bold. When Paul went to Jerusalem for the first time after his conversion in Damascus and met with some of the followers of Christ for the first time, they were very wary of him. They were not sure whether to trust him or not. But the scripture in the book of Acts says, so Paul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly, in the name of the Lord. Was speaking boldly Paul's way of proving he was now a follower of Christ, that he had no fear of reprisals? It goes on to say that Paul even spoke boldly and openly to the Greek Jews in Jerusalem who felt that because of his teaching, they needed to kill him. There, his commitment wrapped in his boldness must have reached them because the scriptures say that when the believers of Christ heard this, they helped him get down to Caesarea on the shore where he could ship, catch a ship back to Tarsus. Have you ever seen the story when you were in Sunday school? I remember seeing it was in our, our, was in our picture books of Paul being lowered in a basket over the wall so that he could escape. And that's this, that's this scene, is this, this picture right here. This man, though, who had terrorized the followers of Christ they were now helping him boldly to escape. In the face of adversity on the island of Cyprus, when the Jewish leaders became jealous of the crowds that Barnabas and Paul were attracting, they showed up and began contradicting what Paul was teaching. And as the scripture says, heaping abuse on him. Did Paul and Barnabas back down? No. Acts 13 says that when Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first, but you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. Now we turn to the Gentiles. Meek and mild does not describe Paul. Bold describes Paul. In Iconium, Paul and Barnabas did what they usually did, went to the synagogue first to preach and teach. There, too many people spoke against them. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. Bold. In Acts 18, we read that his boldness has rubbed off on others. A Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man, the scripture tells us, with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the ways of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to his, their house and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Priscilla and Aquila must have understood this man's boldness and the deep faith underlying it. They had seen it in Paul, and now through Apollos, they see it again. Though he needed further instruction, they knew that his boldness was there, 
and that it had a spark that could lead others to Christ. Now, Paul could be bold to the point of in your face obnoxious sometimes. You read this in the scripture. In his time and place, though, with his intimate understanding of the Hebrew scriptures and law, he was the person that God needed in that place and at that time. And as we know, God will choose, use who he chooses, and he will equip them, and he did that with Paul. If it wasn't, think about this, though. If it wasn't for the boldness of Paul, under the guidance of God, the Christian faith could easily have remained a tiny footnote in history, a splinter cult of the Jewish faith that died out just like many others. But we had Paul and his boldness to bring the faith forward. Now, I'm not a Star Trek fan by any stretch of the imagination, but you remember the words at the beginning of every episode? When the narrator says, to go boldly when no man has gone before, that is Paul. As it says in verse 31, boldly and without hindrance he preached. Bold. Now what does it mean to you to be bold in your faith? How many times do we slink away, not wanting to make waves, just quietly sliding out the door when the conversation gets kind of rough? Sometimes discretion is the better part of valor, but at what point do we boldly talk about our faith? The words from Star Trek tell us what we are called to do, to boldly go where no man or woman has gone before. If you have any doubt, just read the story of the Apostle Paul. He went boldly all over the Middle East. He went boldly on that ship off to Rome, knowing that it wasn't going to end well. Boldness shows in how Paul writes. I love the words he writes to the Romans when he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. That is a bold statement. I think sometimes we get ashamed of the gospel, embarrassed by it, embarrassed that we have a faith to serve and believe in, a faith that sets standards and limits. With his confidence in God's serenity, God, excuse me, his confidence in God's sovereignty, Paul carried on with great fanfare. The author of Acts speaks of how Paul was greeted by a crowd of Christians along the Apian Way which was the road to war Rome. He spread the gospel boldly as if nothing else mattered but then spreading that gospel. In Rome, he carried on his ministry, welcoming all who came to him. Paul confirmed at the end of his ministry, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Boldly says these things. We have this tendency to quietly speak of our faith, which in some circumstances is more effective, but a loud fanfare once in a while is a good thing. Where in your life can you be bold about your faith, talking about it, sharing it, living it with great fanfare? There is somewhere this week to go, a place for you to do just that. I know it. I know I feel it. Don't dodge it. Just go with it. Speak of your faith boldly. Boldly go where you have never gone before. Amen.